Hello, and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper, and today, hey, I'm down here. Today, we're gonna to be testing the 2004 Dodge Viper. Figured since it was such a nice day, we would just go ahead and put the camera up nice and high so you can enjoy the rare sunny weather here in Oregon. Now, I'm gonna be doing just a combination of these low speed driving that I've been doing so far and some higher speed driving to see if I could find any problems with the Viper post catalytic converter self-destruction. Now, if you follow any of my previous videos, you know that the driver's side catalytic converters were completely obstructed when the pre-catalytic converter self-destructed and blocked the post-catalytic converter. Now, that caused a weird problem where after I replaced the catalytic converters, the driver's side bank of cylinders felt like they were being obstructed or weren't firing properly. They also smelled like raw fuel. So that led me to want to test further. I pulled all of the driver's side spark plugs. They looked good. The car has less than 17,000 miles on it, so they should look good. And as of right now, so far on this test drive, all the gauges look great. I've got about 70 pounds of oil pressure, oil temperatures at 210 degrees, coolant temperature is at about 195-ish degrees, and ultimately, I see nothing that would make me think that this car is not in proper operating condition. Now, unfortunately, I've chosen to come out and do the test drive about the time school gets out, so I may be encountering some school buses, but we're not exactly out here trying to set lap times. just rolling into the throttle, I don't hear anything particularly wrong with the engine. Which is a good thing because now we don't have to do any sort of repairs that I can diagnose so far. But it's kind of sad because if there would have been a problem with the engine, that would have been a really good excuse to start tearing into the engine and adding some more power. This car is in general a really nice car. As I've said in my other videos, all I've done to it is the basic stuff that I was just kind of irritating me. I changed out the gearing in the rear end to lower the gear ratios a little bit because every gear was too high for normal driving. I went ahead and replaced the cat back system with a Borla exhaust to get rid of the corroded factory system and to give it a little bit more sound. Now that I've added the catalytic converters, the high flow catalytic converters freed it up even more so it's a lot louder than it was before. I've also installed BC Racing coilovers as the factory suspension was just getting a little soft and saggy from sitting around in people's garages being oogled at for all these years. Now I'm also going to be putting some other wheels on the car just because I want to try to modernize the look a little bit. But otherwise, if this diagnostic drive says there's nothing wrong with the engine, I probably won't be going any further. There's really no reason to do too much work to this car and ruin something that's already a really good package. At over 500 horsepower, it's already got a level of power that is beyond really usable on public roads. And I'm not gonna gut it and turn it into a race car. I did notice that the BC Racing coilovers made a huge improvement. The factory system, I don't know if it was just because it was so worn or if there was more to it, but the factory system was all over the place, way too oversprung and darty. This feels much more manageable, but still with the aggressive turn in and handling that I would expect from a race car or a performance focused car. Now, if this test drive turns into just enjoying the nice weather and talking about the modifications of the car, I'm happy to do that too. So I'll retitle the video according to whatever we end up doing on this trip. Now, when it comes to BC Racing coilovers, I wasn't sure what to expect. They're a Taiwanese coilover company that has really good reviews. Everything I saw online from people who'd installed these on multiple different platforms, but specifically the third gen Viper, really liked them and recommended them over the more expensive American-made coilovers. 
and I have to kind of agree. The fit and finish when they arrived was excellent. The installation was as easy as you'd expect for placing one set of coilovers with another. And ultimately, so far, they feel amazing. Now, we might suffer in the longevity department with them being a cheaper coilover. I don't know where they source their parts, but on initial inspection, everything seems to be of pretty good quality. So far, I don't see any horrible fire coming out of the engine bay. The engine sounds quite healthy. I think we're probably just going to be talking modifications today. Now, the wheels and tires, I don't expect to change anything. I'm going to keep the same Michelins that are currently on the car because they're one of the few sets of tires that actually fit pretty factory sized wheels. And the wheels I'm putting back onto the car are very close to factory spec. I figured it was probably going to be easier in the long term to keep finding wheels and tires if they were near factory specifications. The OE wheels on this car have been replaced at some point because I found out after I got the car back and did some investigations that the dealership had curbed and destroyed at least one if not two wheels. And so they had replaced them and played that accident off as if it never happened. Now that's obviously a very frustrating situation to be in because they, they very dishonestly portrayed the condition of the car. But on the flip side, that means really there's nothing wrong with the wheels that are on the car other than I just wanted to customize the car in some fashion and wheels and tires are an easy way to do it without permanently altering or destroying the quality of a vehicle. After having gone with BC Racing coilovers, I decided to try BC's Forge line of wheels, and they were able to make a custom set of wheels specifically to the specifications for the Viper. Well, a little bit of traction loss there, but feels like the engine was trying to come back to life and do its thing, so that's a good sign. Now out here in the country is a good place to do some just general diagnostics as I can't go too terribly fast because there might be bicyclists or joggers or whatever and there's a lot of driveways so I don't feel inclined to push the car too hard. But also there's a lot of low speed corners and things to make me have to work the transmission, the engine, I have uphill, downhill, I have everything I need to do a pretty good overall assessment of the car. Now, when I had the obstructed catalytic converters, the problem was very obvious. The car wouldn't rev past about 5,000 RPM. In fact, anything past about 4,000 was really straining the engine. I didn't drive it very long like that. I basically drove it straight back, parked it, and started diagnosing it. Now, I'm just trying to determine what it should sound like, given it now has high flow catalytic converters and aftermarket catback exhaust. The pops and bangs so far seem to be just a result of a more free-flowing exhaust pulling in cold, dense air. One downside I'm currently dealing with still is I still have the skip shift on this car, which for those of you not familiar with cars of this era, it was an idiotic invention where to try to improve the fuel economy, if you're too low in the RPMs but high enough, they make you skip the next gear and you literally can't shift into the gear directly above your current gear. Now that's incredibly frustrating because a lot of times I just want to keep in a nice quiet power band area and I either have to end up shifting up to lug the engine or I have to rev the hell out of it in a gear I don't want to be in. Overall I would say so far on this trip what I'm finding is that the car is in perfectly good working order. I really can't find anything wrong right now. The Viper has always been a car that I have a hard time wrapping my brain around because the noises it makes 
would be bad on other exotic cars. It has essentially a flat tappet system, so the valve train noise is just there. You just have it. You have it like you would any other old flat tappet engine design. It also has a habit of making drivetrain noise and doing some strange stuff with the drivetrain that may be a problem, may not, really hard to tell. Uh, ultimately, it's a bit of a trick to determine if the car is having an issue or if it's just because it's so raw and so basic in the way it functions. And the differential is still new enough now, the gear set, that I don't know that if any noise or anything's coming from that, it couldn't just be breaking. So far on this trip, the drivetrain's actually been quite quiet, but I think I will probably go ahead and do a transmission fluid flush just to make sure that it continues to run well, because I bet the transmission fluid that's in here is from the factory in 2004. Well, this is interesting. A solo line crew. Out here on a public road, you can't really test much. You can get up to 55, 60 miles an hour, and that's about all you can test on blind hills, blind corners. You don't know what you're gonna be coming across. These, car, these trucks and trailers are coming into oncoming traffic lanes, things like that. So this is definitely not going to be pushing this car to its limits in any way. And really, with these white attires and this aggressive of a setup on the suspension, Every little imperfection of the road is making the car dart around so much that I can't really tell too much. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and head back. Overall, I didn't get to do any diagnosing because the car seems to be just fine. Now, for those of you following the channel, you may have noticed that I'm approaching 1,000 subscribers, which is quite a milestone considering I didn't really expect anyone necessarily to follow this channel after I had to change the focus from the SR240Z. So thank you all for watching, and if you like any of this content, please subscribe. That lets me know to keep making the content and that it's worth doing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Hello, and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper, and today I'm just out shaking down the Dodge Viper.